Mm -hmm. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Telling It Like It Is. My name is Jade Alberts, a founder of Pure Guidance. I want, to, before I thank uh, our sponsor, I want to get into talking about it's Green Shirt Day. It is uh, in honor, obviously, of anybody that's going to be an organ donor. It's uh, Transplant Day. Obviously, this is the Logan Brule Foundation who passed away in the Humble Broncos accident. So, again, if you're looking at it, fill out your card, go online to the Alberta government. You can become an organ donor. Um, you know, hopefully it could save someone's lives. Uh, again, I want to thank Simply Delivery. They are proudly serving Southern Alberta and Edmonton as a full service delivery and courier company, specializing in food delivery, personal orders, professional services to business and corporations. You can download their app, go to their website, simply.delivery, which is in the comments section, or you can just give them a dingle. But I am excited about today's guest, Emily Craven, the founder of Story City. How are you today? I'm good, thanks, Jade. How about you? Well, you know what? I can't complain. I am out in radium and uh, going to go golfing today. So, uh, hey, you know, life is pretty good right now. <laughs> Delightful. The mountains is like just the place for the soul where you can get, you know, a nice, a nice breather uh, after, after being inside for so long. Well, absolutely. I, I wanted to shoot it out uh, out the bedroom window because then it looks right out into the mountains and everything. But I would have been just a big black blur and it would all been light. So it's like, oh, I'm stuck sitting in the kitchen today. <laughs> it is what it is. It happens. We can't all have fabulous like backgrounds going on there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I, I always love uh, you know talking about how we met because networking is such an important part of business. Obviously, you and I met through the Startup TNT conference. We've had a few discussions since then. And, uh, and here we are having you on Telling It Like It Is. And I'm excited. Me too. It was a really fun experience, that one. No, absolutely. And uh, we'll get into Startup TNT in a little bit. But I'm going to give a brief introduction and uh, then we'll get after it. So Emily is an author, speaker, CEO of Story City, and I love this, karaoke queen. Not shocking. She has a degree in astrophysics and a decade-long career in storytelling and publishing. Having presented across the world on interactive storytelling and transmedia, Emily has won numerous awards from Innovation to Young Writer, Publisher of the Year with her work within Story City. She wants to help creatives you know build careers they love in cities they love by redefining stories so they are something you are part of rather than something you're told. And I and I love that. I remember when I first heard uh, heard you heard your pitch on Startup TNT, and I was like, oh man, that is so cool. I love storytelling. I love telling stories. I love being part of stories. So it's like, how did you come up with this uh, idea? Um, it was probably, uh, uh, um, <laughs> it was one of those things where you're kind of sitting down with friends and you're like, I want to be a part of these stories rather than being told them. And, and, and if I'm honest, I probably read a book, uh, where a character that I was reading was doing something really stupid. And I was like, ah, if I was this character, I would do things differently. Um, and it kind of made me really long for, for, um, the, the ability to be, to be a, a part of, of a story. And yeah. it was kind of at that time um, I was trying to make a name for myself as an author and I lived in this city that was probably the same size as the city that I live in now, Edmonton. And it probably had about one and a half million people in it. And um, there was just no opportunities as an emerging creative to build a career, uh, which really perplexed me because uh, the, the place where I lived, it was also the festival city um, of, of Australia in the same way that Edmonton is. And so there were lots of arts and, and culture and, um, and, and those sorts of things. But like, if you really wanted a career, you had to move to the biggest cities uh, to do it. And so Story City was kind of born out of, wanting to create my own opportunity, wanting to be a part of a story rather than telling it. Um, and and so we decided to kind of test it out and it turned out to accidentally be a really great way to explore a city. Like I found really fun places in uh, Adelaide that I had never known existed. So there was like an alleyway that you used to go into that had this little uh, parking lot in it. And, uh, and I'd walked through there a bunch of times, but had never realized that if you stopped, turned around and looked up three stories, someone had pasted thousands of matchbox cars 
to the side of the building above the parking lot uh, in this little piece of, of, of street art for like stories, stories and stories of matchbox cars. Uh, and I'd never known it was there. And I would lived in the city for something like five or six years um, beforehand. And, and so um, I had kind of roped in several writer friends to, to create stories with me. And uh, I found out a lot more about my city than I ever knew existed. And I thought, well, if I could find this out about my city, like, what are the stories that you can find in other cities as as well that aren't necessarily your regular, you know, like history walks or ghost tours? Like there's so many interesting places um, that sometimes you don't pay attention to because you're you're so busy getting to your job or your school or wherever that is that you don't actually kind of see the the fun things that are around you. No, absolutely. I think that's cool, right? I mean, we think about going to New York, right? What do you do? You jump on the hop on, hop off bus, right? Or you go here, or yeah, you, or you have certain things. I, I, I lo again, it just resonated with me as someone who loves to be creative and take your camera and do fun things with it. And, and why wouldn't you be able to partner? Why wouldn't Edmonton, Calgary, Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, Banff, especially like these tourist places, want to dive in on that and say, hey. Come share your experience. We're not going to tell you what to do. We'll give you a little guideline, but here you go. A hundred percent. And there's so much talent in every every city that you're you're in, um, and, and so much untapped talent as as well. And at the moment, um, this sort of uh, uh, format, this this kind of locative storytelling, um, is is limited to like catching Pokemon in a park. Which seems so crazy to me, right? And and uh, like a lot of those sorts of things um, were really coding heavy, and you had to be really technical to make them. Um, and I thought that's that's you know ridiculous. We have so much talent in each of these cities. We have so many stories that we can tell, both fictional and non-fictional. And um, and all people needed was just the tools to be able to do that. And so that's what I set out to build. No, and and I think it's great. Uh, so how have how has things pivoted here in the last little bit with people not being able to travel and obviously not go out in their cities? Was there a little uh, challenge over the last year? Um, so I had originally thought that there would be, right? Uh, I I had kind of expected it, but. Um, a really weird thing happened. We actually started having municipalities reach out to us being like, we can't run events. And you seem like a way that we can run an event without people gathering. Um, how, does your, how does your platform work, right? And um, we have always been a, a platform to entertain local people with their own city, right? Get local people exploring their own city, playing with their own public spaces. And the tourism side of things was kind of a, a happy afterthought that these experiences would double as tourism. So um, COVID actually has shown that there's more of a need for this than ever before because we can't travel. We're looking for interesting experiences to do with yeah, our family yeah. and friends in our own cities. Um, and we need to find safe ways to do them and generally outdoor ways to do them as well with all of the various lockdowns that you see happening uh, across the world. Um, and so uh, COVID has actually turned out to be a really good time, time to, to, to run a company like this, surprisingly. So... Yeah. Yeah, well, you actually, we, you know, we hear a lot of that talking to many, you know, many hundreds of companies over the last little bit that it's given them a time to, you know, almost slow down, rethink, and I don't want to say pivot, but just how are we going to get our word out there? How are we going to market? How are we going to to move forward coming out of COVID when whatever the whatever you want to call it, the new normal, back to normal, uh, however it's going to be, we're but we need a way to get out there, tell our story, make sure that people are still coming to Heritage Park or Callaway Park or, you know, Stampede or Klondike Days, whatever it is. So, And they're also getting out of the house as well, right? Like, like get, just, just being outside, um, just the, 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 mental, the mental health um, benefits of, of getting out of that, you know, at home office, getting outside, walking around, taking in fresh air, um the the benefits of that um particularly when we have so much screen time now and so much zoom fatigue like it's um 
it's it's sort of become uh, necessary. And um, I find that that when you're told you can't go out, that that's when people want to like it, it's it's just this knee jerk reaction, being like, no, I must go outside more. So I think that I have taken more walks in my neighbourhood over the past year than I had in the past three. Oh, isn't that the truth, right? Isn't that the truth? So what uh, what type of uh, clients are you targeting? You know, cities, tourism, companies, like what? Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, um, we are actually opening our platform up so that anybody can create stories using this platform and using our tools. And so that's actually happening at the end of uh, April, the new version of our, our platform will be out. And so if you are a historian in Calgary who wants to um, continue to run tours safely, you can. If you are a um, uh, the someone within a theatre troupe and you can't do live performances, you can perform yourself um, in different places around your, your city and create a performance that people can attend um, remotely using our platform so um that's a, a really exciting thing that we're kind of opening it up to to any creators who want to to play and and make experiences for their own cities uh but at the same time uh we are what i would consider to be a social enterprise and so uh, the way that we started was that we actually did partnerships with local municipalities um with nonprofits, and and with arts organizations and so we would partner with those organizations to essentially uh, upskill their local creative population and to provide paid work opportunities to their creators to to activate particular areas of um, a city or or particular history or culture that uh, someone wanted to make immersive. Uh, and so we speak a lot to to cities, uh, economic development departments, arts and culture, parks and rec. Um, we speak a lot to tourism boards. Uh, we we also talk a lot with uh, like large theatre companies, writers' centres, um, uh, youth groups about uh, how they can create interactive uh, stories and, and use a platform like Story City to be able to literally put people in the shoes of somebody else. No, I, I can see endless. I, I, I mean, I, you know, things are running through my mind, you know, like even when I go fishing, right, fishing lodges and things along those lines have, you know, rather than doing it right, here's a guy pulling in, you know, a, you know, 10 pound trout or whatever it is that you're fishing for, a 30 pound mm -hmm. jack or walleye. And then there you go. Everybody's got their phone on them, right? So it, it, it's a story right, right, waiting to happen is what your phone is. A hundred percent. And um, it's the amazing uh, tools that you can now um create things with on your phone like the the smartphone is a really equalizing technology like there are there are obviously even in in this country and in um australia you know there are still a lot of people who um you know don't have access to regular internet don't have access to um uh you know laptops or or, or desktop computers but almost everyone can at least get some form of, of smartphone and those smartphones have really um equalized the creation and the telling of of stories, whether it's via social media and things like TikTok or YouTube, or or, or whether it's by doing something like Story City, um, I it really gives me um, hope for the light that we can shine on different stories from from different groups as a result. Oh, I love it. I'm talking with Emily, Emily Craven, the founder of Story City, storycity.com.au. You can click on it right in the comments section. So if Jade Alberts wanted to come onto your site, walk, walk me through the process, uh, Emily. Yeah, well, at the moment, you would see a pretty sign-up form that says, we are launching in April, and if you would like to join us as a creator, please sign up. <laughs> but uh, the idea at the end of April is that uh, we are essentially going to be having um, a, a completely open platform. So you'll be able to go to uh, the Story City website. Uh, it will soon be changing to storycity.app uh, to be to be a little bit more, more global. Uh, we originally, I don't think I mentioned this before, we originally started off in Australia. We now here uh, in Canada. We've set up as a Canadian uh, company here. Um, very proud to be a Canadian company. All of my team is is here in, in Edmonton and like, ah, oh, 
the the amazingly smart, talented people that I have met here in Edmonton is just uh, it it warms warms my heart. Um, but so you would come to the to the website and and you could search your city to see if there are any uh, stories uh, near you. Uh, but also you have the chance to become a creator, and if you become a creator, you essentially get access to our creator tool, which allows you to use the media that you would already use to create. So whether it's you know audio, uh, video, uh, if you're a visual artist, images, text, um, to be able to essentially create an experience in your city. You can geolocate where your content goes and uh, people can walk that content, they can cycle it, they can drive it if you want them to. Uh, and essentially what we'll be allowing uh, creators to do is the ability to sell these experiences to the public um, for whatever they, they wish to. Oh, interesting. I like that profit a profitability aspect of it. Well, uh, we want to build local economies, right? Like my my whole point of starting Story City was that I didn't have the opportunities in my own city. I had no way of building a career in my own city. And so um, everything we do is about uplifting creators, being able to help them build careers from something they're really passionate about and for them to be able to make money from that. Right, like I, um, it, it always uh, annoys me when platforms are kind of advertising only platforms, and um, you know, with with things like YouTube, there are these creators who who make um, weekly videos, and and they get like pensions in terms of the the amount of advertising money that they then get out of that, and um, and I think that if you're building a content creator platform, you need to do it in a way that people can actually properly make money from. The content that they're that they're creating could agree more could agree and i was saying like there's not a there's not a time in the world's history that if you are created or if you want to make money doing it, it could be creating a story it could be doing something silly on tiktok or youtube or whatever the platforms are there to 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 open up i think of our daughters you know at 11 and 14 you know the world's their oyster i mean here you go if you want to do something on your phone and create something and, and create a career out of it you can do that. That didn't exist 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And and I think that the idea of um, what people find entertaining in the stories that um, they really enjoy has changed and morphed. Like you'll you'll meet so many people who will be like, oh, if you if you want to run a um, a, a content website of any description, you have to make sure that you have high quality content. And while I definitely agree with that, you definitely want to make sure that there is. Um, content that in, inspires people and and that gets people thinking and creating really interesting things. I also think that um, the the judges of talent are the public themselves. And if you put yourself in the shoes of like taste maker, uh, I think that that's when platforms really fail, right? When when they don't take into account that there are so many niches and so many interests and so many different types of stories. And so as a result, like uh, companies that, you know, uh, like Niantic who make Pokemon Go continue to make the same types of games for the same types of audiences. And, um, and you miss out on so many stories that way. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's... Uh... I'm more of an authentic person, which is why I do it live, which is some of the, um, the videos that are content that I've created that have had the most views and hits and likes and shares and everything that comes with it have been just holding on to my phone and doing this uh, and, you know, and not really doing any editing at all. So I'm a big fan of authentic and I'm a big fan of, uh, of which is why, you know, even when I go to cities, I like to hop on, hop off because I can hop off somewhere. And then I go and we explore. Oh, I can walk this way. I can go this way. I don't have to go on a tour or whatever it may be. So, I, I mean, I think this is an aspect that I can see that so many people can have some fun sharing stories and on, you know, on their vacations and things that they're doing. 100%. Oh, absolutely. So I know, speaking of, you know, you moved, you moved to Edmonton. Edmonton's got tons of talented people. Absolutely. We met through Startup TNT and the pitch night and the investment, I guess I should say the investment summit. Uh, you made it into the top five. So why don't you explain or share your uh, Startup TNT experience? Yeah, Startup TNT has been one of those um amazing communities that um, I feel a lot of people luck into finding. Um, and it, it was one of those things where I kind of I moved to a new city. I had moved because I wanted to take my 
my company global and um and edmonton seems like an odd choice for that right like a lot of people are like why aren't you in vancouver why aren't you in toronto uh and again it would probably surprise no one that i rail against um you know <laughs> being in those big cities to make the career right like i i kind of want to prove that like you can you can build big careers anywhere you can be build big companies anywhere and I think that COVID is is really starting to show that off particularly with remote work and people being like I don't need to be in New York to be a part of this advertising agency I can you know live in Albuquerque and take in the brilliant sunshine and go to the mountains every day right yeah. um and and it's a it's 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 um so so when I came and I kind of I set up in in Edmonton my husband works in oil and gas as many people do in in Alberta so that was kind of how we we ended up here and I'm so glad we did because Startup TNT is this really vibrant uh, networking community full of uh, entrepreneurs, uh, students who are entrepreneurially spirited, uh, angel investors, you know, um, uh, investors from, from various institutes, people from different um, uh, services that are really interested in, in building Alberta into uh, something that's more. Than oil and gas, right? And um, I've been a part of Startup TNT for almost twelve months before we we ended up being shortlisted for uh, the the second summit. And um, and I think it's really true that like the more your community gets to know you and understand not only that you're passionate, but that you have your uh, um, ducks in a row and your strategies in a row and that you're a person who can make things happen and they see that happening across the across the months and across the year um that um it's, it's that's when you kind of really start to to make to make headway and so the startup tnt uh summit was one of those really wonderful experiences where you get to meet investors of all types who are worried about all different things and so you get to consider all of the different parts of your business and and how do you you show um the angles that you're going for and the strategies that you're doing and um it was a really um warm and welcoming and friendly atmosphere you didn't feel like if you said the wrong thing that you were then going to be like blacklisted and pushed out right like yeah. it was one of those things where you were constantly getting feedback and people were like no, no no I need to know more about this and then they would let you go away and develop it and come back and so um it was one of those experiences that I um felt like I was a part of a community who was cheering me on rather than part of a competition uh, where one wrong move would kind of like set you back. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with that, right? I think it it also the recognition that you gain from that and the people then uh, eyes that are put on your company and and you know we were talking a little bit before and now you're sitting there you're 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 taking it you're expanding and taking probably maybe some of the ideas that you might have heard or or ran by some investors and people in startup TNT community and now you're going out there looking for a race so or getting ready. To, to go out there and, and do you know do, do a pre-seed race so obviously you probably have people that you can connect with through the startup tnt people that may be able to open some doors for you so i really think it's i do love that uh you know the community you know tnt it doesn't stand for dynamite it stands for thursday night tradition which is really networking and really making sure that people have an open platform where we can showcase that yeah come in here and, and, and ask some questions people will help you and and, and what you're seeing in Alberta right now, I think, is because of what startup TNT is doing. People are saying, oh, my God, look at all these companies here over the last two and a half, sorry, three summits after the clean tech one here that are based in Alberta. We knew nothing about these companies. We got to find, we got to open up shop here. We got to start coming into Alberta, investing in some of these tech companies or whatever type of companies that they are. So I think they've done a really good job opening the eyes to the rest of uh, North America. A hundred percent. And I think that it's also opening investors' eyes to different business models as well, because Alberta is very traditionally invested in very specific in industries, you know, like agriculture and, um, and you know, the oil and gas industries. And, um, you know, like they, they understand um, things that have physical assets. And so like startup and, and technology companies are kind of a, a new thing that people are wrapping their head around here. And I think that Startup TNT really showcases different business models and different um, 
uh, types of businesses in a really interesting way that um, at the very least like acclimatizes those those um, in investing bodies within within the state to to think a little bit broader than they have and to be to take a little more risk than they previously have done and um, will only get a more robust you know um, set of companies out of that. Yeah, I agree. I, I couldn't agree more. So I know you've kind of explained what's next, and that was going to be my question. So, <laughs> so you're opening up your new new platform to to creators to, to go out there. So I guess what is your end goal when this happens? It opens up, and and uh, how does Story City blow up from here? Yeah, I think that our, our end goal from here is that we essentially, um, as I said, we want to put uh, the content creation tools in in the hands of your regular storytellers so it's not limited by how much technology or or um you know coding knowledge that you that you have you can you can just focus on the on the content in your city um and we plan to essentially um roll out across north america by partnering with cities to to activate those public spaces for people during COVID in a safe way. Um, but also we want to run a series of prizes in different cities um, to, to get people thinking, like, how can they be creative in their cities again? How can they rebuild uh, their art industries, their tourism industries in a more digital uh, way and, and hopefully start kickstarting the recovery of that um, in, in these different cities as the, the vaccines roll out? No, absolutely. No, I, I agree with that. And, and I'm excited. And every city and every little uh, whatever business or tourist or, or people are going to be itching to go and, and, and itching to, uh, to create something. So I think it's uh, you know, coming out of this is good timing. 100%. <laughs> so I always hate it when our conversation is coming to an end and uh, you know my last question is always the same uh, Emily, but I want to put a little twist on it for you since you are the master storyteller if you had one piece of advice for a small business startup or entrepreneur about the importance of telling your story or storytelling what would it be um, people don't buy based on your features they buy based on emotion so if you are a small business or you are an entrepreneur or you are you're anyone who's trying to connect with someone um in a way that is beyond transactional because I think these days every business can be transactional but if you want repeat business if you want evangelists and if you want the most important marketing asset of all which is word of mouth you need to build a connection with people and people's brains are not wired for um dollar values or um you know, features, they're wired for stories. And so if you tell a good story and if you tweak some sort of emotion um, and uh, it, people go on a lot about, about solving a, a pain point, but yes, you do need to solve a pain point, but at the same time, like you've also got to excite people. You've got to get people kind of thinking, you know, with their with their heart and having visceral rather than rational reactions to 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 you and to your brand. Um, and so that's why storytelling is so incredibly important. And to storytell on an emotional level, not on a um, rational level, because people buy with their emotions, even though they pretend that it's business decisions. You know, investors will invest in companies that they like the founder right um uh, and, and so that's why storytelling is is so incredibly important and there are some wonderful resources in and around that right like you um there was a wonderful book um uh, by a woman called kendra hall um around storytelling um and uh, that really helps you kind of craft stories for marketing messages and and for for customers and, and those sorts of things but you should really look into like ones like that check out books by um uh, about like uh pixar called creativity inc from ed catmull or uh, about netflix netflix's no rules rules book like all of those tell stories in really compelling ways um, and that will kind of give you a feel for how you could potentially start telling your own story to your own customers. I love it. I love it. And some book recommendations. I'll have to I'll have to put those in too. <laughs> Make sure people get those ones. I love Indeed. it. 
Emily, thank you. I, I really appreciate you uh, coming on, telling your story, sharing your story with us. Anybody that wants to find out more information about Story City, just click on the website in the comment section. It'll take you directly there. You can reach out to Emily or myself and uh, we can have a further discussion. But again, Emily, thank you again uh, for, for spending time. Yes, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, I'm sure we will chat soon. Perfect. You too. Bye, Bye everyone. Good day, everybody.